Good afternoon as well as good evening and good morning and very warm welcome on behalf of ISA, UNICEF Serbia and the LEGO Foundation to all of you who are joining this webinar from all around the globe. And believe it or not, we have more than 300 people registered for this webinar and we really do hope that we will be able to meet all your expectations. Today's uh, topic is supportive orbits around family, playful parenting and engine for creating supportive family-centered networks at, at the local level. And uh, the way how we conceptualize this webinar is that we are going to have questions and I, it's going to be more like a panel than uh, like common common webinar because we would like you to leave today with some ideas, with some uh, um, that you, you are going to feel inspired to take some actions and start changes in your communities. My name is Zorica Trikic and I am a senior program manager in uh, International Step by Step uh, Association. This is an organization with almost 100 members from 40 countries in Europe and Central Asia. And uh, today I'm going to welcome these passionate and really dedicated people. Diego Adame, Director, Global Programs at LEGO Foundation. Jelena Zajganovic Jakovljevic, Early Childhood Development Specialist at UNICEF Serbia. And I'm going to ask Jelena for help today. Uh, her special, uh, special mission will be of course, to present the work that UNICEF Serbia with, with, uh, uh, with their partners are doing in Serbia, but also to monitor question and answer box and chat box for your questions and comments. We have Maja Knežević Romčević, Board Secretary at the Standing Conference of Cities and Municipalities. We have Misha Stojilković, father, journalist, and author, author of the shows Papa, You Are Crazy. Ivana Mihić, associate professor of the Department of Psychology, Faculty of Philosophy, Novi Sad. And Natasha Krstić, associate professor, professor, Faculty of Media and Communication, in the Dunum University. So, except Diego, all of us are from Serbia and it would be easier for us to sp speak in Serbian, but we are going to do our best to have this webinar in, in English. Thank you, dear panelists, for joining and thank you for, for your willingness to share your ideas, to share your successes and also challenges that you are facing while trying to mobilize local communities around families, parents and children. Uh, what I would like to say at the beginning to, to all of you who joined, joined the webinar. So keep in mind that we are the people that you are going to see and people that you are going to listen to today. But we also represent, especially my panelists, that they are also the voice of hundreds of parents, NGO activists and professionals from different sectors from Serbia who work, whose work and efforts we are going to share with you today. So huge, huge um, warm greetings to all of them. Unfortunately, we could not bring them all to the webinar. Uh, as I mentioned before, please use question and answer box and use chat box to share your questions, to make your comments, and we will all try to, to provide you with information that you are looking for. So let's start with play. Remember last time, 
when you were playing with your friends, children, neighbors, colleagues? How did you feel? Please take your phone or use your, open another browser, a window in the browser, and you can, I, you can, um, um, you go to www.menti.com and then you put the code 2202340 or you can just use scan. I don't know how to do that, but it sounds very sophisticated. Just scan with your, for, with your form this QR code. So how did you feel? Type one word. Oh, happy, joyful, energized. <laughs> Emotional. Creative. Tired. <laughs> Must have been very interesting game. Okay. Happily foolish. Light. Let's wait a little bit more. Safe. But the main Main feeling is happy, happiness. <laughs> happily foolish, challenged, wow. Let's see, is more coming. wondered and would, I would like to remind you when we feel like this we can create miracles so let's start with our discussion thank you for voting you can keep on voting we will have results so Diego I would like to start with you in 2019, uh, your foundation, the Lego Foundation, started the partnership with UNICEF to scale parenting interventions that promote playful interactions, increase global knowledge and buy-in for playful parenting programs. In Serbia, you are supporting in-depth country work. So, can you tell us what playful parenting is? and how playful parenting program approach philosophy, as I told you, I'm never sure how to call it. For me, it's more than program. I think it's approach and philosophy can help us mobilize different stakeholders to join the efforts in building, nurturing, and supportive orbits around families. Thank yes. you. Thank you very much, Sarica, and thank you for the invitation to you and to UNICEF and ISA. So I'll start my words by stating some facts. I, I think we all can agree on these facts. The first one is we know that the earliest years of children's life represent a critical phase for their brain development. Science tells us that we have the evidence. Also the evidence shows us that children develop best when they receive a nurturing care, keeping them safe, healthy, well nourished, and have quality interactions that build connections in their brain. We also know that parents and caregivers have a critical role in helping children during this time. And in particular in 2020, that role has always been important, but the pandemic has really highlighted the role that parents have in the development of their children. And finally, we know there is growing evidence from parenting interventions that show that increased quality interactions and nurturing care between primary caregivers and their children during the early years lead to improve uh, learning and health outcomes that persist throughout their life. So we know all those facts and hopefully you all agree with me. And many times we get this question at Level Foundation, what do you mean by playful parenting? And that is a question that we have tried every possible way to answer it. And hopefully today 
I'm trying something different and, uh, and I wonder if this will be useful for the conversation today. We believe that all parenting programs that are out there are playful because all of them uh, promote uh, some level of play and we know that it is natural for caregivers to engage in play with their children. And all parenting programs seek to increase play between caregivers and children. Sometimes it is called early stimulation, sometimes it's called responsive caregiving, sometimes it's called serve and return interactions or other names, but we believe that all of that is play. So why do, why do we stress the importance of playful parenting? And for us, we put the emphasis on the playful side of things because we think that the playful interactions have to be of quality. And what does that even mean? We believe that when parents have interactions that provide nurturing care that are meaningful and actively engaging, and when they help their children iterate and interact with others, and when they bring joy to the bond they have with their children, they help their children to develop their full potential. At the Lego Foundation, we simply call this rich and warm interaction and quality care, playful parenting. So it is about the quality of the play, uh, the playful interactions. And what does that mean for the topic of today's webinar about building, nurturing and supportive orbits around children and their families? If we set the goal to provide children with quality play experiences as a starting point, because we know that we all have in common that we want the best for children and to, for them to thrive and have their best development. And we know that play, we have the evidence that by playing they can uh, achieve that. If we set that goal of how do we ensure that children have access to playful experiences, immediately we will have to start asking about, in order for children to really benefit from play, they have to be in a safe space, they have to have uh, their health and nutrition covered, and they have to have responsive adults around them that are providing them these inter interventions. The beauty of play, and I love how you say it, Sonita, about we just saw in, the, in the, our responses, the majority of people say, when you think about your play, the last play experience, you were happy. And as Arisa was saying, and that's a, when we have, when we're in a state of happiness, that's where the magic happens. If we want to bring people together, we know that play is a non-controversial, it's an easy to understand topic, everyone can relate to it, and everyone has a positive connotation, or most people will have a positive connotation and will think of happiness. And if we use that as a convener, the power of play, probably we can help to bring people together to ensure that children have all the conditions that they need to have quality play experiences with other children and with our parents and caregivers. So today I invite you to keep that in mind as you brainstorm on ways to build supportive orbits around caregivers that will help children development. On behalf of Lego Foundation, I want to express our gratitude to UNICEF and ISA, not only for this uh, webinar, for the, the partnership that we have and that we are building together, and all of the work that we are doing in the region, in particular in Serbia. I am sure it will be a great conversation and I really look forward to hearing uh, your reflections and your questions. So please enjoy the rest of the webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lego. Thank you, Lego. <laughs> Thank you, Diego, for this very inspiring uh, introduction. We like to say that if you want to bring people together, you just ask them what are their dreams for their children. And then the, all the borders and boundaries are melting and people come, come together. So thank you. Now I would like to ask Yelena. Yelena, would you like to share your, your screen? Can you go to full? Oh. Yelena, in Serbia, under the Playful Parenting Program, you are really putting a lot of efforts uh, to create a systemic change. So what is the impact of Playful, playful Parenting Program so far? Can you make it full screen? You go to this orange line and press. Mm -hmm. No, no, I know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Do you see it now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Zorica. Thank you, Isa. Thank you, all the participants. Thank you, also Lego Foundation. It's really a pleasure to be together with you today. 
and uh, I'll try to answer the questions that you, that you have posed. Uh, it's not an easy question uh, because we can not talk really about impact, but we can definitely talk about some changes that have been introduced in the program uh, that I hope are going to evoke also some thinking of all the participants, how maybe they can use the same strategies or how they can make their programming better. And we are already seeing some advancement uh, by, by changing the way that we are working since uh, a year ago when we started the scaling up playful parenting program. But just to start by saying that this is a continuity of the already um, uh, ongoing investment in the country when it comes to early childhood development, uh, but that we have noticed that in the past maybe we have managed to position the early childhood development higher on the agenda. We have uh, maybe managed in the health system, particularly, um, particularly health system, to um, uh, make professionals understand that really the first three years compared to the next three years are even more important in investing and engaging. Um, but uh, we know that we have come to the level that, uh, um, uh, that we need to do something different in order to scale. And uh, the new program or the program that we have uh, started a year ago is actually uh, a new level and new uh, deepening uh, of, the, of the strategies that we are using for scaling. And I will say a few words about that and hope that I can inspire others to be thinking about it as well. Um, one of the very important principles that we wanted to engage in, it's actually uh, learning by doing. And this is particularly because we think uh, from the point of view of the child that uh, is basically um, saying us, yeah, let me do and I will learn. And it's the same for any other professional and parent in between the professional and the child. Uh, so the strategies are very much about engaging into um, not only uh, bringing a new content, but actually uh, focusing on how we actually change the strategies and how we introduce the change into the professional thinking and from professional thinking and working into parental thinking and working and into the child's also um, expectations for a child. And the cross-cutting, and I thank um, Diego for talking very much about that, is definitely a playfulness, a playfulness as a, I would say, a mindset for all of us, and the playfulness as a, a, a relation that is built between parents and children and integrated in everyday uh, situations. Uh, so if, you, if we talk about program, we know that we have one of the main challenges that we wanted to address was really uh, changing the way uh, we are um, addressing and looking at uh, parental uh, and supporting parents. Um, from something which is more a preaching and teaching and sometimes even medical approaches to the situations and problems that they are facing into the family-centered approach. And for that, we have introduced uh, most intensively the Caring for the Caregivers program as part of the package and I hope in some of the next iterations we will have a chance to talk about it much more. So what does it mean? It means really being, uh, uh, creating a, a responsive environment which is actually looking at the cues of parents who are also looking at the cues of children uh, and uh, looking at their strengths and, and thinking and working with professionals um, in order uh, to, uh, to, uh, to shape their relations with parents that can mirror the relations of parents with children and that can forget about, I would say, teaching and preaching and, and uh, the, the way that uh, the parents have been uh, supported and approached uh, in, the, in the previous period. Uh, it's also more engaging fathers and looking at the gender dimension, uh, which will be the critical issues that are, that are, and critical strategies that are brought throughout the program. And I said, very much playful and responsive um, interactions that are, that are nurtured throughout the program. And that is uh, uh, one of the pathways which are talking about the quality of services. The other pathway is really about strengthening uh, professionals and uh, bringing new uh, ways of learning. So besides training, this is definitely uh, much more um, um, uh, attention to uh, supervision uh, and uh, supporting them also to learn by doing and to experience through the personal 
uh, experiences and through professional uh, experiences the change and the purpose why they are investing in playful parenting and why they are investing in supporting parents for the playful and responsive interactions and by engaging them and changing their attitudes we certainly hope that this is uh, uh, going to um, bring this uh, challenge of introducing innovations in the everyday life as a as a willing willing uh, innovation from the point of view of, of frontline workers and that this will additionally motivate them to really introduce the changes in the everyday life and we are working with mainly uh, visiting nurses education professionals uh, social welfare professionals for them any change might be difficult but bringing motivation is the most important thing uh, the other uh, Concepts are definitely uh, uh, looking at them as uh, and creating uh, among the professionals champions for change uh, so that they can work in uh, peer relations, uh, sharing knowledge, sharing skills, and uh, uh, addressing each other's, each other's beliefs. Uh, on a community level, uh, it really um, is important to, uh, important segment of the work is really uh, again creating responsive communities that are reflecting the parental needs and bringing and sharing the networks for children and parents and again champions and influencers because the horizontal learning that can happen between the municipalities in our country and we have chosen at this moment to focus on six and this six will transfer to the 27th and 27th uh, scale even further uh, is uh, the important uh, way of, of, of bringing uh, community and uh, bringing community change uh, to the, in, into the focus. And uh, uh, one of the important community changes and one of the important issues that we have um, uh, embraced uh, is uh, that uh, we definitely have to look for the uh, fit for context uh, uh, strategies. Uh, adjusting them to the cultural, to the to the to the needs, uh, to the um, um, uh, components that are quite um, uh, needed for the community, and that can that can address and bring the change in the community. The pathway, which is uh, particularly uh, uh, important, is also a policy pathway, and this is where, uh, as you can see, uh, we have focused quite a lot on bringing the uh, new. Uh, um, uh, I would say narratives uh, that engage hearts and that engage minds into the evidence and into the uh, advocacy advocacy um, agenda. And uh, um, uh, among uh, all, uh, I just wanted to share uh, at the at the end uh, the the positive aspects that have uh, brought to the program, uh, uh, or actually what has uh, COVID nineteen has. Uh, taught us, um, in addition to everything else that we have invested in, in, in the program, and uh, it helped us to put parents in addition to the uh, spotlight, and how parents are have cho have proven to be uh, really a critical um, support to uh, children and uh, family environment as uh, um, as a nurturing and uh, I would say orbit together with uh, with all the other actors that are supporting a child. It also taught us COVID also taught us to look. Uh, uh, and oriented the whole system to look more at the needs um, and uh, completely new perspective. Uh, this was completely new perspective for all of us. So it uh, made us even be more needs oriented uh, and more oriented towards uh, people that we are supporting, uh, which again made the system being more open to hear uh, in, this, uh, in this way parents. And the third, uh, uh, the third uh, change that COVID has brought is uh, really a, a proof that we can be flexible and, they can, and they can, we can make a meaningful and effective solution even in a shorter, shorter time and that we can think out of the box. And this was particularly true when the program had to completely um, engage with uh, video and teleworking and uh, successfully uh, overcome some of the barriers that were caused by um, uh, not being able to get into direct contact with the, fam with the families and, uh, and supporting them throughout this, these years. Uh, and uh, one of the most important uh, results so far 
is really gathering uh, uh, more than 100 uh, partners uh, that are working from the different levels of uh, policy, community, academia, civil society, uh, uh, bringing an understanding that uh, play is uh, really the way we should be um, uh, promoting and we should be using play and in promoting and resp responding uh, uh, to, the, uh, to the needs and uh, uh, bringing into the responsive relations of uh, parents and children um, and that uh, the strategies that uh, can uh, can uh, um, that i have talked about uh, uh, can bring uh, 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 a new momentum uh, in the in the lives of uh, both uh, children uh, parents uh, professionals communities and also um, and policy makers um, i hope that uh, some of these strategies we, we will be hearing also from the speakers that are talking from uh, that will be talking today and that we can uh, further discuss them in the in the in throughout the webinar thank you thank you yelena thank you you reminded us on something extremely important we all need nurturing orbits so i think that what you are doing you are developing different levels of nurturing orbits everybody is supported and everybody is mobilized and thank you for bringing back this heart and heart and passion and vision in the picture sounds great ivana i don't see you i would like I have a question for Ivana. Ivana, can you just take us to the journey through the, through the enabling community context and accessible ECD services and programs which are providing families with this kind of continuum of support? Can you tell us how, play for, how the Play for Parenting program is uh, contributing to development of that supportive context. So it's a high complicated. I hope, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you see me now. Yeah, uh, we see it's you. It's great to be here. It's great to be here. It's great to talk to all of you. I wish we could uh, get together in more convenient way. So drinking coffee and talking and discussing with among each other, but with all those huge amount of people who are joining us today in webinar, but this is okay as well. Uh, so thank you for the opportunity to speak and to discuss the very important issue of playful parenting and nurturing care as well. First of all, when answering your question, let me just say that this is a huge paradigm shift for all of us. So for all the practitioners from the um, health system, early childhood education and care, uh, social welfare, but also for all the parents from our communities and the, the community in whole. Providing ECD services with the research evidence-based foundation is very important. At this point, research data now clearly inform us on what quality parenting is. It informs us on um, what early childhood development is and what kind of supportive environment each child needs in order to develop at its best. Um, but introducing uh, the playful parenting, we hopefully will unite in a shared one, shared view on quality parenting. This is step one, I think. All of us ought to have in mind that quality parenting is a unity of uh, healthcare and health provision, um, nutrition provision, sensitive responsive parenting, uh, security in both physical and emotional way, and creating learning opportunities at home for each child. So all of us working with families have to have it in mind all the time. More than that, none of these components of the quality parenting may be achieved without the others. So we can't take care only about the health services. We have to take care of the parenting in all. Um, none of them can exist in parents' attitudes or behavior towards child uh, without taking care of mental health, providing child with strong, secure, supportive, acceptive relations. So shared parenting opportunities for each parent to participate and be involved with the child. Um, gender balanced family environment, if you may call it that way. Um, so above all that, uh, we have to have in mind that none of the components of quality parenting can exist without enabling child participation in everyday routines with the family. Uh, without um, parents being able to understand the child's perspective of the world world around him 
and being able to engage, fully engage in one truly children's way of learning, so play. So therefore, every uh, program that aims to um, support quality parenting uh, cannot be introduced to the set of workshops or anything similar to that. We have to integrate it in all the services that meet the family from the journey, uh, in the journey, on the parenting journey, if I may say, that uh, from the pregnancy, so from the way day one, throughout the life cycle. So all practitioners, home visitation nurses, gynecologists, pediatricians, early childhood education and care teachers, they all have to share the same idea on what quality parenting is and how to ensure that each family has adequate support to provide children with that kind of experience. More than that, we want the whole community around family to communicate the same ideas. So we want a community um, where, for example, a pastry shop serves free lemonade with cake each Friday for fathers and their children and provide each father with a short info on what, why play is important for the child. Or we want a um, community where on each crossroad you have a small sign saying, please stop here, take your child's hand and take a moment to say how important it is for you for your child to be safe. This is why it's a huge paradigm shift. We have to change what we know. We have to change what we believe about the child, about the parent. And among, among all that, we have to change the way we communicate and work with families. We have to integrate play and uh, communication, talking to child, reading to a child in everyday communication in families at all levels. So bringing parenting, playful parenting, um, may be an entry point for that kind of a shift. We hope it will unite us all in a single view of the what is important for a child. We hopefully will bring play to its right position and introduce play as a way we can actually communicate all day long. So this is the main idea of our building program in Serbia. I hope this is an intro enough for the introduction and in that we will be able to talk more about it. Uh, you put the same ingredients in the in already yeah. existing programs, yeah. services, approaches, but you just want to bring people together to send a unified message, what is important. Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much. And now let's see what policy makers have to say about that. <laughs> Maya, thank you for joining us. Uh, from the perspective of a policymaker or somebody who is working closely with policymakers on uh, on a local level, can you tell us what are the strategies that you are using or you are trying to use to bring early childhood development and playful parenting in the spotlight of policy decision making? Thank you, Zorice. Thank you, Isa. Thank you, UNICEF and uh, LEGO for opportunity to speak on that conference. And very good question. Thank you very much. But I don't feel myself like decision maker, but uh, thank you. I will talk about that. Uh, as you know, the situation with the COVID-19 pandemic has set new tasks, new challenges to the modern family, parents, not just in Serbia, all around the world. Today, the average 60 meter square apartment has become uh, the classroom uh, where parents do school work with the children, uh, the office where parents working from home online, like me today, <laughs> as well the game room, playground, etc., uh, etc. Et and all of this happened very fast. In just a few weeks, parents became the teachers coach, child development experts who care for their families, mentally, physical health. Uh, and all of that it was in some context of high level of fear, fear keeping the jobs. Uh, these challenges tend to be even more general and they are constantly living on social and financial margins. And I really want to say that is the very important uh, 
for all system, not just important, that is the necessary to provide uh, the strong support for parents and for family in the next uh, few years. Uh, for us who are working in the public sector, it will be some kind of moral obligation. Uh, but what he said about the local governments, uh, local governments, First of all, they are the founders, or they have an important role in coordination between the preschools, schools, uh, primary health se sector, uh, social work center, etc., etc. And also, they have the role to assist or financial support the civil sector. Also, they are provided the different financial measures for uh, financial support for, for the families and also usually the, the families who are in the social deprivation. Uh, but I will ask for answer on your question at the moment. What can be that kind of strategy? Uh, I can uh, first at all that will be, I don't know, improving intersectoral cooperation between the institutional of health, social, preschool, education, and civil sector. That is the uh, we provide some uh, research and we are indicate, indicated that uh, local government they provide different kind of services, different kind of services, uh, but there is a significant difference in approach and services from the municipalities to the municipalities. For uh, another uh, head, uh, we can say what will be the also important, that is the opening channel of communications between the local self-government and institutions of local self-governments too, and parents for another side. There have to be two direction open channels of communications. Why? For one, the other parents are unfortunately unaware of their rights. They usually don't know, don't have the information, one kind, what kind of support and services provide the local government in the territory where they lie. Uh, for local government, why they are important, first of all, they will be uh, create together some uh, politics which respect the specific needs of parents in one community because there is no single recipes that can be applied to all local governments all over the several or everywhere in the world. Uh, third, what I would like to say that is the we have to uh, necessary to establish a system that will be ensure sustainability of the changes that we want to see happen. We have a lot of experience in Serbia uh, where we have some projects and changes who have to be uh, uh, short term. We want to have changes to be long term and don't last only while our project lasts. We can provide sustainable social development. When we are speaking in the practical terms, this means that we will activity work on existing strategies and in procedures to improve them, dissemination, the good practices, creating lasting mechanisms that will be financed from the local budget. That is be the very important to find the right place in the local budgeting. And the final, uh, we usually know that when we have the motivated persons, the only motivated persons who encourage change and system that institutionalize and straighten this newly developed mechanism, when we have the sensible politicians who are really care about the parents and about that kind of politicians, uh, politicals. Uh, local political also when we have uh, the very good the experts in that field uh, who are really motivated only motivated can uh, make the changes and we will really hard to work in that field thank you Maya. you i think you mentioned some very important things like changes and uh, 
like motivation for change and the impulse for change should come from all the sides and what local governments have to do, they have to follow the laws and rules and stay open-minded and sensible. And also one more very crucial thing that we have to work across the sectors. So thank you so much, Misha talking about different stakeholders and different sectors. What media, what media can do? Uh, can well, you do uh, anything? <laughs> uh, it, it depends on uh, who, you, who you ask this question. Someone will tell, will, uh, can tell you it can, they can do a lot. Uh, someone else could tell you media can do nothing. I think I'm somewhere in between uh, these two. Uh, solutions. I think uh, the, it depends on uh, whether the media are privately owned or uh, public services. Uh, I think that public services like Radio Television of Serbia here in, in our country, or I don't know, BBC or some uh, other uh, public service TV can do a lot uh, because uh, uh, the role of public service uh, television is to, among others, uh, to educate also to inform and entertain, but uh, to educate uh, the viewers. And I think this is one of the best topics uh, to be educated about. Um, so uh, what exactly can media do? Uh, I guess uh, that they can promote uh, the uh, parenting um, through some, uh, not only through some specialized uh, TV serials or, or, or uh, talk shows. I think they can do it uh, in their everyday program, starting from the morning programs until the evening. Uh, they can always have at least some short uh, two or three minute videos about parenting, about different issues in parenting. And, and, and uh, all of us who are parents know that we can talk about it every day and that we can think of 365 different topics to cover. So uh, it can be uh, a part of everyday program uh, of, of, of TV stations. Of course, uh, um, uh, talking uh, about televisions, uh, of course, that uh, there, are so, there are some specialized uh, TV serials about parenting. They can be educational. Uh, they can also be made as a, as a short or not so short uh, films. Um, the main thing about it, I think, is uh, for these shows not to be patronizing to the parents. Uh, so they should be um, the parent friendly. Um, we shouldn't uh, we shouldn't be the ones uh, who are preaching something, who are trying to teach parents some lessons. Uh, I think we should just give them examples of how other people and other parents are dealing with their everyday lives and with uh, problems, uh, uh, I mean problems, uh, issues, challenges, however you call them, uh, uh, with their children. Um, also, uh, uh, I think that uh, um, different internet uh, uh, portals and web pages uh, can be a very important partner in this uh, in this uh, issue that we are talking about, because uh, uh, we are all we are all on the web almost 24 hours a day. Uh, so we read a lot of articles, uh, we see a lot of a lot of videos on the net. So why not see something about parenting? Why not see some? Uh, advices from the experts, uh, why not see some experiences from other parents. Uh, from my perspective, I think that uh, this uh, uh, peer education, is, if we can call it that, is maybe the best thing to, to, to have. So just to, to have the opportunity to see and to hear and to listen to other parents, uh, you can call them, you know, your colleagues, <laughs> uh, and, and see a, a, a hear about the ways that they solved some of their problems. I think it can be very, uh, very helpful. So thank you, Bishra. And I've heard that uh, you're planning to show us at the end of the webinar a very short video. Yes. So we will, we will try to save time for that uh, because you're famous for this show 
Papa, you are crazy. Not so, so famous, but okay. <laughs> it doesn't matter. But I think you, you made a very good point. It's it's this kind of respectful approach to parents, and uh, and what uh, also all the previous uh, panelists were talking about, building on the strengths of parents, not taking deficit approach and teaching and changing them. Thank you so much and. Let's move to Natasha, because I think Natasha also has a very interesting things to share with us. It's about business. We usually forget to talk about the role of employers, the role of, uh, because we, we mentioned uh, during the, the previous presentations, we were talking about well-being of parents, but we just forget that there is one very important part of the story. And you did a lot of research and we shared it with UNICEF Serbia. We shared the links, but maybe you can share the links again. Uh, can you tell us what, uh, what parents, how parents can be supported, how, what employers can do? Uh, hello to everyone. Greetings to the participants. I'm very happy that we have close to 130 people listening to this important topic. Well, actually, the question Zorica you posted could be revised. And um, for, for me, the question is, should children become the key stakeholders in designing family-friendly workplaces? And what is a family-friendly workplace? This is one of the strategic pillars of UNICEF cooperation with the business sector in the area of workplace impact. And for that reason, um, and having in mind the COVID um, uh, uh, crisis, uh, which moved millions of children and parents working and uh, learning from home, uh, we have conducted um, interesting research uh, in late spring in, in Serbia. This is the first time that UNICEF took this kind of approach. So what we did actually, we have crossed or intersected the opinion of the employers with um, um, about uh, balancing work and life, especially for, for from the perspective of working parents and from children about the impact of the parental workplace on them. How do they feel it? So we had actually two pools, one with approximately 1,300 children uh, Serbia-wide, uh, and uh, they, they expressed the opinion on the impact of the parental workplace and what needs to be done to make companies more family-oriented. The another pool was for companies disseminated through large uh, business associations, and the employers shared, it was uh, close to 70 employers, um, they shared their views on achieving a balance between work and family, and they also provided a very uh, useful insight into the pre-pandemic and pandemic family-friendly workplace practices because we know that the pandemic has shaken the whole entire business world and the concept of work, the working concept as it was so far. So in top line, an apparent gap was identified between family-friendly workplace practices which are offered by employers and the needs the children have regarding their parents' workplace. Um, for example, the surveyed children mostly notice that their parents work over time and they often witness uh, parental discussion about work at home. They also claim that parents have time for them, but um, one-fifth of parents um, have truly little or no time for their children. Uh, this came out from the children's opinion. So this was quite discouraging. Among them, those parents who lost their job during the pandemic were in lead, that they don't have time for their children. Uh, moreover, most of the young respondents also confirmed that they have joint activities with their parents during the working week. But Nevertheless, almost half of them single out for important events for children in which they lacked parental attention, where emotional problems and school and sport competition was on the lead. So also the research has shown that children have primacy in the parents' lives uh, and parents mostly fi uh, find their time for children, but they don't in, uh, from the children's perspective, parents don't have time for themselves, especially working mothers. 
which is indicating a lack of achieved work and life balance. When we come to the employers, they are also entirely aware of the employees' young family members and claim to be open to the needs of working parents, but only if this does not jeopardize business goals and operations. So despite confirming the benefits of the family-friendly workplace concept, so when we gave the, the employers uh, possibilities to score what family-friendly workplace workplace practices can benefit most of them scored all of, of the answers but business goals still take precedence with employers employers also understand the challenge of striking a work and life balance for especially working mothers high level managers and employers and employees in larger cities because we don't have this grand nanny service which we have in smaller towns but in practice they do not encourage employed fathers to take a parental leave. So you asked me also what can be done from the business side and from the government side to support parenting when we look from the workplace impact. Especially when mm -hmm. we talk about young children. Look, Zorica, what is interesting is that when we map the practices, UNICEF is scoring them in four areas, mostly child care and child support for young children was dominating but nobody was supporting parents with adolescents and we can all now say that adolescents with the covid are also facing huge challenges from, you know, but i have yeah. to i i love stories about mm -hmm. adolescents but please tell us about youngest youngest children uh, who had who, some very very interesting insights about uh, parental leaves and... Uh, look, so it's a, this was done through the UNICEF U report platform and having in mind GDPR regulations, uh, children uh, below 15 years cannot participate. So we had mainly youth and adolescents in the group of the surveyed children, which is somehow normally because you cannot ask a kid of seven years, do you witness that your parents speak about work, this kid is still not on the behavioral level to, to address this issue and to understand it properly. Uh, but um, the adolescents and youth can make a quite good um, impression about what it means to talk on the phone during vacation and to respond to emails. So uh, you also asked me, what can the business do to support parenting? Yeah? So um, for me personally, um, as someone who, who researched this very interesting topic, it is necessary to utilize that positive finding of employers' awareness and their openness to the needs of the parents in the workplace and to redirect them to specific HR policies and activities that will reduce stress at work and improve family well-being for the employees thus becoming an internal part of the organizational culture, which is now very popular, you know, employee branding, organizational culture, and family friendly could be one of the strategic pillars or a point of difference. But to be effective, these family friendly workplace practices must be personalized. So it doesn't mean one size fits all for the technology sector and for the banking sector and for, for the processing industry. And it also should be designed as a balanced package of time, service, and financially related measures adapted to a very variety of family forms and non-standard work situations. So each company should make its own assessment and find a tailor-made approach. Uh, business should also advocate for paternity because in Serbia we had like something 340 uh, fathers taking parental leave in 2019 and um, we actually don't have um, a positive vibe neither from the business nor from the government to to do it because the the the, the um, there is a stigma from the from the father's side from one side and from the other side the parents both of them don't understand how this early childhood development where both parents are present is important for the future development of, of, the, of the children. So the regulator could address the stigma of paternity, either through some behavioral change campaigns or with fiscal incentives for the employers. And the employers should make through their HR department or through their councils for responsible parenting, uh, explaining to working parents 
what it means when both parents dedicate a month, two, three for a newborn. Yeah. Um, so the research identified an evident gap between the offered pre-pandemic family-friendly workplace practices and the expectations the children have from the workplace of their parents, which where we are coming to the conclusion that the employers are doing something what is a corporate standard or corporate culture or HR uh, policy, but not looking how does this fit to the working parents in reality. The only overlap which we uh, uh, identified between what the employers offer in the workplace and what children value was recognized in the possibility of vocational work from home. And this can be really a solid starting point in redesigning um, family-friendly workplace practices in this post-COVID environment. So also what can large employers do, but not only large. Each employer can do it. They can make, um, they can involve their staff and their core family members in the development of tools and channels and resources which are designed to support the culture of healthy work and life balance. So they can, as I mentioned, form a counseling for responsible parenthood within or under the regulation of the HR sector. This is especially uh, interesting for really large employers or they can uh, also consider um, deploying some new tools. And I mentioned that this adolescence, I will finish with this sentence, was a, a neglected category. And for example, parents which have adolescents would appreciate new communication channels, uh, informing them about the challenges. And, and uh, uh, as promised, last <laughs> sentence. <laughs> UNICEF, uh, <laughs> Even uh, even I shared some links to research. I think it's a very interesting research, and I think that you mentioned this work and life balance. And I think that Yelena, we have a question addressing what to do. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us? Yeah, there is a question, and I I think that uh, most probably Ivana would be the person. To yeah, the it. Ivana. Yeah. Uh, when we started the the, the whole. Um, uh, webinar, we heard in the Mentimeter that some people were experiencing also being tired or challenged uh, and when, you, when, when they are to engage playful interactions with children. So how do you see actually preparing frontline workers to address parents that are challenging uh, or that have challenge in using play as a mode of interaction? Yeah, well, I see that Liliana also on, on, yes. within the chat raise the issue of uh, parents being viewed as the first and most important teachers of their children. Um, well, I, I would like to go a step back and uh, make us all think a little about how do we perceive parents and do all of us, so practitioners, really believe that each parent is really capable of teaching a child something also uh, what i think that it is important uh, what, what i think it, that is important is for us all to remember what do children actually learn uh, so how do we understand the, the whole idea of learning and teaching when speaking about the children at the youngest age so answering your question yellen i, I can't see the question in the uh, chat so you probably found it somewhere where i can't see it or i'm not able to see it uh, I think that all practitioners should actually, first of all, think about their own beliefs about the child and the parent. We have to change uh, the, our ways we, we can communicate with families in order to be able to uh, model parents' behavior, but at the same time, being able to um, make them truly believe that they are capable of taking care of their children in the way that the child needs. So for, for the moment, at this moment, uh, we, uh, for example, a lot of adults, including practitioners, would believe that play is something that happens uh, from time to time when a, when a parent has time and is um, truly dedicated exclusively to play. What we would like them to think about is that play can be integrated in an everyday routine, in everyday talking with the child. So throughout the day, and we would like them to think about what do they have to know in order to make parents truly believe that they can offer such kind of experiences to their children all day long. So our first aim in introducing the trainings for the practitioners will be first of all to revise their own beliefs about parents and making them, so practitioners, really think about 
how much they truly believe and how they build up on the abilities of each parent to truly be a teacher of a child. I don't know if I answered the question. Yeah, and maybe also really remind people on what we did in first Mentimeter, the joy of play, the joy of play. And Yelena, we have one more question. Yeah, um, just maybe a, a comment, which actually uh, is uh, linking to what Ivana was saying, is uh, that uh, spontaneous play can occur uh, at any, uh, any moment in time. And it's really uh, emphasizing what uh, she was also mentioning in, uh, in, 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 her, in her answer to the question. Um, I just wanted to compliment uh, when Misha was talking about how the uh, media can engage in, uh, uh, in really supporting parenting and some of the very good examples, I think, of uh, um, also part of the work that is done in Serbia was that uh, during COVID times, when I was uh, just mentioning that uh, ha there has been the increased understanding how important parents are and how important investing in parenting is, but how many challenges parents are facing at that particular moment. Maybe on one side being more with their children, which is a great thing, but on the other side also addressing all the issues related to uh, stress, to um, um, not, not, not knowing what is going to happen, uh, uh, many cues and questions that are coming also from the, from the family and from the, from, the, from the children themselves. So what we managed to organize with the with main, uh, I would say public media service, um, uh, Radio Television of Serbia, it's actually a daily uh, little shows in the morning, on da daily, daily uh, time, for parents in the morning shows on a daily basis and discussing with the various um, experts and peers uh, around the, the critical questions that uh, parents had at that particular moment. And play was very much in focus because actually through play they could uh, also uh, have a kind of, they could experience, uh, of course, their play is, a, I would say, a, yeah, they, they could have, they, they, can, they can release their, themselves from stress, but also ch children as well but can use for explaining any situation that is happening um, no. around them so uh, but, uh, just wanted to ask uh, uh, misha uh, because he's like one of the uh, now besides diego one of the uh, i would say male participants and fathers uh, when we think about uh, response of the system uh, can you from the perspective of fathers, tell a little bit more what the fathers really expect from system, what they expect from business in order to really perform their role as, uh, as, uh, as fathers. I was listening to what you were talking about. Since you are minority, you have like two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I want to share uh, two things with you. Uh, number one is uh, introducing obligatory parental leave for fathers at least one month, but paid, paid. That's what I'm insisting on. Uh, of course, uh, it has to be prepared with a very well-coordinated campaign by uh, some ministries and also media. Uh, and also other thing uh, uh, that we can uh, advocate for is uh, um, for all the companies uh, to become more uh, parent friendly, uh, meaning that they can by themselves introduce uh, some uh, good practices. For instance, there is one foreign company here in Serbia that introduced uh, a paid leave for fathers uh, for one month uh, in a period when, when the mother finishes with her parental leave they give uh, all the fathers who work in that specific company one month of paid leave to be home with the kids. And I spoke to some of the fathers and they are thrilled. They loved it and they wanted it to last longer. So I think we should encourage uh, companies, uh, private uh, owned companies and also from public sector to introduce that measure. Those are two very concrete and specific measures that would uh, that all of the parents both uh, fathers and mothers would benefit from thank you misha thank you misha and you now already started to talk about some good practices mm -hmm. yelena was talking about uh, this morning morning uh, tv shows you are now mentioning that there are examples 
that some companies and uh, and agencies are trying to find a way. Uh, the Natasha was mentioning that some companies were inclu inviting counseling counseling uh, services to support parents. But there is one example that I think it's, uh, and sorry, even I will ask you again, uh, and again, you have two minutes, the beautiful story of the bears. Can you tell us how a little seed, a very tiny little, little uh, activity when it's uh, well planted and supported in this system of promoting playful parenting, how it can become something very special. Yes. Well, it goes with the idea of um, making parents really understand what a routine through which a child plays really is from the perspective of a child. Um, well, it all started two years ago in Novi Sad um, community. When we asked the whole community to participate in a single activity, let us make reading with a child uh, available for each child in our community for mon one month. And it actually happened. The whole community participated and every child living in Novi Sad was being read with uh, for every day, for 30 days, 15 minutes by their parents or someone else who actually works with them. Since that, uh, that February, you mean doctors, nurses, social yeah, yeah. workers, everybody yeah. was reading. Everybody from the community participating. And I want to say what happened now and make a little bit of a story about what happens today. So since that, uh, that day two years ago till now, uh, we actually uh, have evaluated, piloted and evaluated four different types of teddy bear reading programs. Those are um, early childhood development programs that actually fit to a, to a single family, um, addressing their needs in order to develop quality routines with their children. And they are integrated in every service that family actually meets during their pathway uh, through Novi Sad community. So for example, we have a home visiting nurse that would deliver a teddy bear reading visit at the month of the six, uh, when the child is six months old. So she will, those are mainly females, she will come to family and model the behavior of reading with a child. We, had small, we have small teddy bear reading centers at the pediatrician counseling units. So each pediatrician has the opportunity to show how to read with a child since the child is two months old. Uh, we have the libraries at the uh, women's safe houses, uh, children's shelters. We have more than 200 teddy bear readers who actually read with the, with the children throughout the community of Novi Sad. At this point today, we have a small campaign where teddy bear readers, and those are now scientists, engineers, cooks, librarians, ballerinas, veterinarians, so everybody from the community, uh, share their own home videos uh, where they give voice to uh, research evidence on why reading with a child is the best way to bond with the child and to um, stimulate development and learning. And what is the most important thing? So Novi Sad is a teddy bear city, so teddy bear reading city. And what is most important, we have a symbolic support for the local authorities of Novi Sad. But at this point, so two years after the first idea, we are for the first time uh, being offered the financial support for the 2022. So all of this actually happened um, by, not by being funded, but by the base basic community shared idea that reading to a child is important and that bringing uh, research data in everyday practice with a child so everyday small routine with a child is important and achievable and this is also also one of the one of the pieces of the puzzle of playful parenting yeah and mayo i have a question for you now i'm running <laughs> Uh, Mayo, I have a question from you. You have uh, experience. You have one short example from local community. I think it was Rashka or something in Serbia mm -hmm. that you wanted to share with us how yes. they mobilize themselves. Oh yes. 
But as you know, in Serbia, uh, we have uh, good example for local government and the bad example for local course, government. Of course, like yeah, everywhere. <laughs> like everywhere. Uh, but what is the specific? That is because we don't uh, men uh, uh, mention any significant uh, co uh, connection, uh, correlation between the economic development of local government and quality of service. Yeah. Yeah, we because uh, and we have the small municipalities who are in the, the, the economic development, but in the same time they have uh, the high awareness of politician, politician decision makers, and who are so sensible for that subject and who really have a great uh, social development policies in all uh, in all in in all sectors how i say in, in all the may uh, yes we have the rashka rashka can be one very good example for what for did the, they do uh, okay, uh, they they start with that project in 2019, and they established one innovate social and educational services. They hire services providers to help children with disabilities during daily school uh, course and monitor their work both in schools at homes. At the same time, uh, they are educated the volunteers who are also going in that schools. Uh, they are the children who take care during the, the class met and who, uh, who are playing with their children uh, during the classes in the school. Uh, but what is the very important, there has proven to be great support mechanism during the COVID pandemic and online schooling. Why? Because uh, these children have received type of support for the whole pandemic and monitoring and help during the uh, to do school work. Uh, and this has uh, given parents great relief. And also that is the second message. Uh, that is the volunteerism, volunteerism of, of the children who are going to school. And that is the messages very important. The volunteerism was a very, very important role during all COVID system across all uh, local government. Uh, so, so I have a uh, have impression that as somebody who is coming from this area of policy making, uh, you're sending a message to civil sector and uh -huh. volunteers just mobilize and move. But I think that the responsibility is shared. And now yeah. you mentioned COVID-19. Yeah. What did you learn, all of you, what when you I look at the, at, the, at the policy, at the, at the uh, playful parenting program and mobilization of the local community and building supporting network? You mentioned now that if, if uh, mm -hmm. schools and everything that is wor working, uh, all these services, when they mobilized and started together, they gave relief to, to mm. parents. Yeah. Jelena, on the level of the project, what did you learn? You asked me, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. I, I think I, I tried to say at the very beginning a little about uh, how, this, uh, how this has affected, uh, uh, the, I would say, the... the and that's why I'm policy. bringing it back, yes. because you were Just talking the, about every, yes. all the services. Yes, it really, uh, it, it is, uh, it, is uh, it was one hand, I would say, uh, additional eye-opener for uh, everybody to understand that uh, we are talking about the best support for children and the family as, 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 as and parents as somebody who needs to be put in the in the center of our focus and center of our support and it was much more easier I would say to talk about uh, and to address this issue uh, because everybody was aware of that and also because everybody was uh, faced with unknown and with the, with the, with the trying to find the solutions for, for what is uh, what, what are the life uh, situations, it was it was really uh, um, um, more uh, res uh, respective and more responsive from the system to understand so in, that in some way... solutions can be made in this regard, and that play is as I said uh, kind of uh, uh, um, a benefit for children, for parents, for the community, and and really a way in way out from the stressful situation as well. 
can also be like a cure for mental yes. mental health yeah yeah and not one cure of the but support was, yeah one of the one of the critical also lessons learned i think for for everybody being in that situation is actually understanding more the most vulnerable families because being in a situation where actually services are not as easily accessible it actually made us or put us in the shoes of the most vulnerable families who face that on a daily level and beyond COVID, uh, and uh, made us also understand how we can find the strategies to reach and support and understand the, the most vulnerable families. But, but I think all of you mentioned something that was very, very important, that we have to stay open-minded, that we have to, uh, to adjust to the specific situation. And as Natasha said, we cannot say that one size fits all. And I think that now we have a very nice, very interesting comment in the, in the chat. What if parents cannot read? Can we praise them for something else? <laughs> yes. Well, um, we don't expect parents to read. When we, uh, when we introduced the teddy bear reading activities, we actually we were talking about reading with a child and we were talking to parents as well on how they can make a book. What is actually a book? It is a piece of paper with a bunch of illustrations. You actually talk to your child and play with words and play with illustrations, things they see, thing they, things they hear every day and make them um, engage in a actually playful conversation with you. So it's not basically reading to a child. It's playfully conversating with a child about some things that they actually find. And, and I think this is, this is the, the risk of this kind of webinars when we want to open different topics and just uh, boost interest in panelists in uh, participants because at the end we will give you contact contact emails so you can continue conversation but i think that even now thank you for this anya thank you for the question even thank you for the answer mm -hmm. i think it's it's extremely important to to, to keep in mind that from the beginning we are talking about empowering and respecting respecting parents. And I think that Maya made a very nice comment that uh, what the local governments are doing, it's not about how rich they are. It's about how sensitive and interested in, uh, in their citizens <laughs> they are. And there is also, uh, Melush said years ago, it's not about who parents are, it's about what they do. So the social background, position, level of knowledge, gender, that's not crucial. It's crucial what they really do with their, their kids. And I think we will, we will start a little bit, a um, little bit to wrap up wrap up this uh, this webinar is there anything that my panelists would like to say and i didn't ask you is there anything that you want people who are listening and listening us today to know to I remember would, i would like to say something just one minute it's okay it's okay i'm not <laughs> i'm not so so dangerous. <laughs> okay uh, uh, what is my main lessons to learn during the COVID? Always when we have some crisis, like today with COVID, family became the major cells and big board of society. Uh, and I would like to say, okay. society have a moral obligation to create a system of support for parenting and children to straighten parents and provide them with the necessary help. Uh, we really have to, to, to think, I, I talking about the side of local government, the child should have a parents who are competent and psychologically stable enough to respond to all the needs in these challenges uh, time. Uh, we have to make the strong uh, and sensible politics, strong uh, parents, and when we, when we have the strong parents, we have the strong uh, children, and there is the future of the strong local communities. And I would really think so, there's 
any society have any more important tasks than this the strong future societies and i think so the base that is that approach the child in all politics misha you also wanted to thank you maya misha you also wanted to say something yes uh, i received the question what was the most important thing for me as a father uh, as a support from health or uh, other professionals and i must uh, uh, emphasize uh, the important role of hello beba service hello baby uh, it is. Uh, it's. It, it is a great. When you sorry, when you say hello, baby, it sounds a little bit weird. <laughs> so you have to explain well, what is hello, baby. <laughs> hello, baby is a tele. Yeah, it's a phone service that operates uh, 24 hours a day, uh, seven days a week. Uh, so uh, it it gives support to the to all of the parents from Serbia and also all over the world uh, coming from Serbia. They can they can call the uh, um, and ask any questions about their ch their child's health. Mo mostly, it's about uh, when their kids are sick or so. Um, it's uh, the, on the other side of the line. There are some uh, how they they call nurses, uh, pediatric. Patronage, patronage yeah. nurses. Yes. Uh, we'll keep are... it for the next webinar. Yes. Hello, okay. hello, so baby. I just want to say. <laughs> One big thank you to all of them because uh, they have been so helpful for me and my wife. And for I don't I know about a lot of our friends who also call them a lot. So great service, great. So service. so it's it's uh, it's like keeping just making parents relax so that yes. you can really focus on a child. And yes, yeah, that's exactly. philosophy. Behind and I promise in the next webinar, which will be on caring for caregivers, we are going to talk about Hello Baby. Yes, yes. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have enough time to unpack all the miracles no. and all the goods that these wonderful people with their collaborators and st stakeholders are going, trying to do in challenging yes. circumstances and times. Anybody else? One more minute. No. No, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to close the webinar and then I'll kindly ask all of you who are interested to stay and to see the video from Isha. Is it okay? Okay, so before, I want us to do one more. Oh God, one more, one more thing. I want you to go back to to Mentimeter. www.menti.com and use code which is written on the screen, which I cannot see from all these other things. So two two zero two three four zero or just scan the 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 code. And what I want you to do is to use one, two, up to three words to describe something that you can do, something that, uh, some action, some activity, some service, something that can be done and which will contribute to building, building, um, Sorry, I'm I'm trying to fight with my antimeter. So you, you can type one, two or three words describing an action, activity, service, whatever, that is going to contribute uh, to building stronger, supportive and nurturing orbits around families. Start learning. More learning. <laughs> Can we play also with neighbors and friends? It's very interesting how often child is mentioned. And I think that our, our panelists were today also trying to put parents in the focus because without stable, happy, relaxed parents, 
it's very difficult to have happy, relaxed, and success. I don't like successful, but thriving child. It goes in a package. <laughs> Free educational services, parental leaves, sharing experiences, play, play, sharing information, more media, self-care for parents. As we said at the beginning, we all need nurturing orbits to be able to give the best that we have. <laughs> so it looks like we need more free services, we need paid parental leaves, we, we need more communication and connections, more empathy, and we need to be supported by different services, psychological support, only when it's necessary. As psychologist, this is my advice. I think that Misha made the great point mentioning peer, peer support and peer learning. Mobilizing, uh, creating, creating uh, civil society, early intervention, and stop judging parents. And I really want to finish on this note. Stop judging parents, listen to them, put them in the focus, and trust that they want the best for their children. So this is the end, official end of the webinar. I kindly ask you to stay after because Misha is going to share his screen and show the video. I'm sorry we didn't incorporate it in the webinar because we didn't know on time. So let's continue conversation and let's learn from each other and soon we will send you a recording. You can find us on Facebook, both ISA and UNICEF Serbia, <coughs> sorry, on Twitter, on websites, and for more information, you can contact Yelena or me, and we are going to connect you with all other, other, other panelists. So thank you panelists from Serbia and good luck with your endeavors. Keep us posted and informed. And I promise we will have at least one, maybe two webinars talking about good practices that are emerging in the region. And for participants, hope you get some idea that you were inspired Nurture your nurturing orbits and ask for support and help when you need it because this work needs patience, strength and time. Thank you so much. So Misho. Um, yeah, I just wanted to, to, to use this opportunity to, to, uh, to show you a very, very fresh video. Uh, uh, I have just finished editing with my crew it's uh, very short video, so please short, yeah. stay uh, if you can. And it is about a TV show uh, uh, called Papa, You're Crazy. That can we share it soon? also? Because we are going to send recording on the, of the okay. webinar, so maybe, let's goes. see, let's see. Here it goes, let me just share my sound. And this is just a, a short intro, intro for the serial. Papa, you are crazy. Papa, you are crazy. So stay tuned for all of you in Serbia. It will start very soon. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe even before New Year's. And the comment on Papa, you are crazy. There is a movement called <laughs> Men in Men in Childcare, and they have uh, T-shirts which are saying "Men who change diapers change the world." So. 
thank you. I hope you enjoyed. I hope we will see each other soon. Bye.